Greetings and salutations and welcome to my 7 days to die tutorial. Now I will be showing you probably every aspect of this game. Now we are going to be starting with the basic tutorial and then moving on to interesting tips and strategies regarding things like booting, base building and economics. So as you wake up in another's gun, you will be met with the following note and this note reads dear friend the wasteland can be an unforgiving place i found you naked and left for dead with no supplies it looks like you crossed the duke in a bad way and you could be using some help enclosed is a short guide to help you survive if you complete it we might take in a few more citizens the White River Settlement. It's real and it's safe. Peace be with you, friend. Noah. So, once you click on continue, you will now be given the basic survival quest. Now, from this, you will learn the basics of how to harvest as well as how to craft and build buildings. So the Trist Tracker says that the basic survival is your active quest. The quest status is displayed on the objective tracker at the top right of your screen. So as you can see, currently there is craft a bedroll, gather plant fibers 0 out of 10. Now for more information on quests, you will access your inventory and navigate to the quest menu. So, in order to get to your quest menu, you can press O. If you hit the O key, you can see that you now have opened up the quest menu. Alternatively, you can hit the tab button and click on the little exclamation mark right at the top. So, here you can see the quest is to craft a bedroll. Craft a bedroll by gathering plant fibers. Once you have the ingredient, open your crafting inventory, navigate to the basic recipe, ca recipe category, highlight the recipe and click the craft button. Place the bedroll in the world by first equipping it and using the secondary action key. Once you have placed, you'll see a bed icon on your compass and mass. This will lead you back home and will act as a respawn point if you die. Now, a quick note here is that you will only respawn to the last bedroll that you've placed. So, without further ado, let's get to crafting. So, in order to get on fiber um, unless you are in the desert snow or wasteland plant fiber is pretty much everywhere you see all this grass well that's plant fiber so what you do is you walk up to a tuft of grass you punch it and we've collected so go ahead and collect a few now that we have collected enough plant fiber, we can hit the tab button and go into the crafting. So basic crafting, they call this basic crafting because you can make all of these items directly out of your backpack. You don't need any special tools or equipment or workbenches or anything. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the bedroll at the top over there. You can either click on the craft button or, as you can see here, you can hit the W key in order to craft. Now, the bed will take two seconds to craft and once it has crafted, you can take it, drag it into your hotbar and release once you tab out, you will see that if you scroll the mouse button or you hit the corresponding key, you can then select the bedroll. So, if you left click, you can see that you can rotate the bed. Now, this rotates it 
clockwise. If you hit the R button, you can then rotate it anti-clockwise. Now this can come in useful a little bit later when we start working on the building. So in order to place the bed, what you can do is you can right click and you place the bed. Now, if you can hover over the bed, you can see that you can pick the bed up using the E key. So we'll press the E key and you'll see that the bed is once again in your hot bar. Another cool little thing, especially if you're playing on a multiplayer server, you don't want your bed to look like everyone else's. So how we can change this is if you hold in the R key, you will see there is a shape button. So what we do is we click on the shape button, release the R, and you can see that you can now choose a myriad of colors regarding your bedroll. So we've got red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple, pink, gray, white, and on green. Let's check out yellow. So there we go, our yellow bed. Now I'm not going to be placing the bed right now. I'm going to place the bed once we have established a mini base. So the next mission that we have, if you hit if you hit the O button, you can see that the next mission that we have is to craft a stone axe. Alternatively, if you look at the top right of your screen, you will see craft a stone axe so here we have to gather two plant fiber two wood and two small stone so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go into an empty hand slot so that we can gather so as you can see every now and again you'll come across one of these grass tufts that look like a small dried out bush if you punch one of these, you will gather wood instead of plant fiber. So what we can do, because we are going to be using a lot of wood. So we are going to quickly go and grab as many of these little branches as we can. So once you have gathered enough wood, we can start looking at some small stone. Now, what I normally do is I first go and gather my first two small stone. And I craft my stone axe. So as per usual, what you do is hit tab, click on the stone axe and click craft. So once you have your stone axe, go and put it into your hotbar so that you can now start using it. Now, what I would like to recommend, especially to new players, is go and harvest stone. The reason for this is that the weapons and the tools in 7 Days to Die do degrade with use. So... In order to repair the stone axe, you need stone. So, if you walk around, you will see rocks like this every now and again. So, what you do is you walk up to it, and with your primary attack key or your primary interaction key, the left mouse button, you can start harvesting stone. So as you can see in the bottom right of the screen, you can see that not only are you gathering some stone, but you are also getting XP from doing this. So if you look at the hot bar, you can actually see the degradation on the stone axe. So as that little colored bar is going down, it means that more wear and tear is happening on the stone axe. Now, to protect your resources, what I normally recommend is do not repair anything until you absolutely have to. Now, I'm gonna quickly go get some more um, 
stone and actually you know what let's have a look at my inventory so by hitting tab you also gain access to your inventory so you can see i've got 29 wood and 66 stone so i'm just going to carry on harvesting some stone until my axe breaks Now, the stone axe has finally broken. I can no longer use it. If you try to interact with anything, it will actually tell you that this item needs repairs. So, in order to repair the stone axe, what we're going to do is we are going to move into the crafting menu. We're going to select the stone axe in our hotbar. And you will see that there is a repair button so if you look we've got 79 stone we select the stone axe we click repair it uses one stone and we have got a fully repaired stone axe so my advice is go collect more stone collect a bit more wood because we are going to be using quite a fair amount of wood um, to start off our base. So now that we've got our stone and wood, let's look at the next quest so as you can see in the top right hand corner it says craft plant fiber clothes now this one i go a little bit off track with the um collection of the plant fiber um due to the fact that um well i'll show you so what i'm going to do i'm not going to waste my stone axe um, durability on grass so i'm just going to scroll until i get to bare hands again and we're going to punch a whole bunch of grass now feel free to go and get yourself approximately 40 uh on fiber because we are definitely going to be using every single blade so i've got about 46 right now now it is telling me i need to craft a plant fiber shirt pants and as you, if you tab into the crafting you will see those two are highlighted so you can build them or craft them i recommend that that you go into clothing and you will see that there are plant fiber shoes plant fiber hood hats, gloves, shirts, and pants. Now, I would go, if you if you look at the plant fiber shirts and uh, the hood, um, they require uh, the same amount of plant fiber, but I don't know why. I actually prefer the hat over the hood. So I'm gonna craft some plant fiber shoes, a hat, some gloves, as well as the shirt and pants. Now that I've got all of them, if you select the clothing items, you can see you get the option here to wear them, or you can just hit W. And there we are. If you wanna look how you look in your outfit, what you can do is just click here on the character button and there is that sexy beast, Mr. G63, in his blonde fiber clothing. So, our next mission, as you can see on the top right, is we need to craft a wooden club. Now, in Seven Days to Die, there are quite a few different types of weapons. Um, you have your, you can use the axe as a weapon, however, it is not very efficient. So what we're going to do is we can go hit tab, click on the wooden club, and then hit craft. So once again, as the wooden craft has been crafted, 
the wooden club has been crafted. We're going to move this also into our hotbar. And we can select it as our weapon of choice. Now, to give you guys an example as to why you would prefer to use the wooden club over your axe is you click on the axe and you can see the melee damage or the melee damage. Um, as you can see here, melee damage of the stone axe is six, whilst the melee damage of your wooden club is 13.8. Alright, so we have now got our club, we have got our bed, we have got our axe, and we now need to craft our first long-range weapon, the bow and arrow. So, of course, what we need to go and do is we need to pick up some wood, which we've already got, gather plant fiber, which we already have, and we have stone. What we need now is some feathers. So as you walk around, you will notice every now and again, these little bird nests. So here's another little piece of information for you. If you hit E, you can search it. So as you can see, I'm lucky I have gathered two feathers, but let's say I want more feathers and I don't find any other bird nests. What I can do is I can actually harvest the nest in order to get additional feathers so i'm gonna run around i actually saw quite a few right here like there we go jackpots now there's also a chance that you can find eggs in the bird's nest um for your prime uh, for the starting of the game it's always really cool to have a few eggs because you can cook them and eat them as boiled eggs or um you can fry them with meat to make bacon and eggs and as you can see we have just gotten our first egg you can also eat it raw but the benefits from it are not as good if you open any sort of container and you want to quickly grab everything from the container and put it in your inventory you can do this by using the r key so by hitting the r key you grab everything and put it into your inventory now i can go and harvest the net the nest so we have now gotten all the ingredients that we need in order to build our primitive bow and to craft arrows so what we can do here i can hit tab once again go and just get rid of that so that we can see we've got the primitive bow we need one of those and we can do uh some stone arrows now here's a little quick trick for example i have i want to make as many stone arrows as possible so what I can do is I can either click on the stone arrow and then click on this little button over here, which basically allows me to build the maximum a number of stone arrows based on the materials that I currently have. The other way of doing this is if you hold in shift and then click on the arrows, boom, I can craft 23. So I'm going to craft 23 arrows because I don't really have any other use for the feathers at this moment in time and I've got quite a bit of wood and stone now we are going to be doing the start a base quest so this is going to be basically just quickly running you through how to build a base um, what I'm going to do actually you know what I think I'm going to build right over here. I tend to like to build close to the traders because it's an easy place to get my quests and it's also um, a nice area uh, for when you start doing your economic playthrough. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to place my land claim block. Now just be careful when you're placing a land claim block. If you're playing on a pvp server if i destroy your land claim block i can then gain complete access to your base now also note that if you try and build too close to important pois such as the traders or other 
um, player's bases, you will see that as I'm trying to place the block, there is sort of like a red lines around me. Now, this basically put, puts up a cube behind around me or around the land claim block. And with that, it shows that I cannot build here because I'm too close to these important points of interest. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go run into the bush over here. And as you can see, it has changed from red to white. So this means that this is now a safe area to place it. I am not encroaching on anyone's boundaries. So we're going to be placing the block right there. Remember, right click to place, left click to rotate. Now, what's really cool is not now I can't see where the outer borders of my land claim is. But if I walk up to my land claim and I hit E, you will see that a green cube has now appeared around me. Now, this shows me exactly where my land claim is. So everything inside this area, I can build. I will have complete authority on the use of anything built in this area. So what we're going to do is we're going to start building a base by first crafting frame shapes. Now, they just want me to craft uh, one. I'm going to craft a few extra. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shift, select frame shapes. And as you can see, I can craft 67. So it takes 27 seconds for me to craft those 67. So let's get that crafting going. While we're doing that, I'm going to quickly chop down a few more trees just so that I can get some space to build around my base. So we have now got 60 frames. I'm going to shift and click on them to drop them into my hotbar. We're going to go over to the frame. And as you can see, now I can place my frames right around my land claim. And okay, it looks like this little Mr. Wood over here is in my way. So knock him out, pop that down. And there we go. So we've placed our frames. Um, what's really cool with Seven Days to Die is that the build, the developers have given us access to almost every single frame shape in the game. So, for example, if you look at that base, you can see there's some very interesting shapes there, like the cone and all of that. So in order to see all the shapes, what you can do is hold an R, and click on sh and hold hover over shapes and release your R. Now you can see that there is a, a cornucopia of shapes that you can use in order to build. There are a lot of, uh, let's go here to all the square shapes. So you've got poles and you've got brackets and rounded corners and very interesting arrow splits, etc., etc., that you can now use to build your base. Um, I normally recommend that in the beginning, what we do is you just focus on the uh, cube and perhaps on the ramps. So the ramps, what I can do is I can actually go and put a ramp in so that if I walk this side, you'll see I have to jump up to get in. But if I put a ramp, I can just walk in okay so oopsie good thing i used frame so you'll see that when you are crafting um you've got frame shapes and then you also have wood shapes now the difference between these two is that frame shapes you can pick up if you pick up a frame shape you can then change the shape put it down but once you've upgraded it you can no longer pick it up so if you want to remove it you need to destroy it the wood shapes are like that so if you go you select a wood shape you'll see let's quickly craft one for us so 
So as you can see, the wood frame looks like a wooden frame. So if I hold in R, you can see I can do all the shaping as I would normally with a frame shape. But if I put this down, you see, I can pick that one up. I cannot pick that one up. If I want to pick that one up, I will have to, um, I'll have to destroy it. So I'm going to quickly just tell this to go back to cube. I'm going to add a four more cubes around here just to make my little starter base a bit bigger and uh, homely. There we go. So I've got a nice little platform down. Uh, let's put up a bit of a door frame here. So doors in here are two blocks high. I'm just going to jump up here. I can put that one there and boom chakalaka we've got a door um, now normally I don't really build like this but for this tutorial I think this just gives you a very good idea as to how to place them so remember always right click to place I'm going to put a corner up here I'm going to take that away I'm going to put a wall up here and here. I'm going to take that one away. So I've got sort of like a T-shaped window area. And I'll show you why I'm going to do that but later. So the other thing that we need to do in order to complete our uh, starter base mission is of course upgrade. So what you want to do is you want to pull out your stone hammer or the stone axe. You then just make sure that you have got the resources, so wood. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click on, well, I'm going to hold in the right mouse button on the frame shape. So as you can see, boom, I have now upgraded it from a frame shape to a wooden shape. Now this consumes uh, eight wood per frame. Now, this does not matter whether or not the, the it's a, the normal frame or even the ramp. Okay, so I've run out of wood. But now we have got the next mission, which is build a campfire. So what we're going to do is we're going to hit tab. Because we've got the stone already, we're going to craft our small um, campfire remember shift and click drops it to your hotbar i'm gonna run inside and i'm just gonna quickly put this on the floor so there we go now the you will now be given a new message saying good job survivor you have proved to be capable with much potential we have marked your map with the nearest white river outpost location there you will meet Oh, you will find a trader where you can buy and sell goods, trade stories with one of our friendly citizens. Welcome aboard, Noah. So, we're going to continue. Now, luckily, we were able to be, uh, spawn close to the trader. So, if, if you run, you'll see um, littered across the entire map. Um you will find these traitor joels now these are the traders so if you walk in here let's make sure we close the door behind us um you will see that inside here you, there is an individual that you can trade with now this is freaking awesome i love trader jen he always tends to have the best technologies as well as medicine so you can just talk to her as you can see we have the option of um can i may i see your inventory or do you have jobs now if you select may i see your inventory you open the shop so as you can see she has got quite a remarkable number of items to sell as well as a secret stash of items that she can sell now, certain perks like the Lucky Looter, Better Barter will change the quality as well as the, um, well, how advanced the items are that she sells to you. 
So we are just going to tab out. The other one is, do you have jobs? If you click on this, you will be given an option of five different tasks. Now, these tasks will relate to how much reputation you've built with the specific trader. So by doing more tasks, you get to go and do better missions. These better missions will, of course, result in better loot, better items, but also tend to make you... Um, more of a zombie target so always be careful when looking through these now my habit is always to look for the closest um uh, uh mission that way i don't need to travel so far and far back and forth with the um doing the different missions so i'm not going to select a mission now in the next episode i will be going over um Things such as uh, loot. Um, yes, so I'm going to be going over things such as uh, looting, raiding, questing, and how to basically look what to look out for. So for now, what we're going to do is we're going to be heading back to our little base. We are going to be, I'm just going to be quickly upgrading it just a little bit so that we have a safe place to hang out in overnight. Now, traders are open from 6.05 in the morning until 9 at night. If you are playing a vanilla version of uh, 7 Days to Die, um, you will notice that the traders will actually teleport you should you come too close to the trader um, after hours. So always keep that in mind always plan that if you are going to be doing a what we call a trader day so either doing a mass buying or mass selling um, always make sure that you keep your business hours between five minutes past six and nine o'clock but mr g you might be saying how do i know what the time is so what we i am going to do now is i'm going to take you through the hud or the heads up display or the user interface to explain all the different aspects of things that you are currently seeing on the screen so right at the top of the screen you are going to see your compass as well as your clock so as you can see i'm looking in a southeasterly direction this is day one and the time is 1307 now for those of you who do not know military time that means we are just it is eight minutes or nine minutes past one in the game the next thing that we're going to be looking at is the top right hand corner where you will find the version number of the game it just makes it very easy for you to see exactly what version of the game you're playing now um currently we are using the alpha 20 and this is the fourth release so that's alpha 20.4 um this is the stable beta uh then we're gonna move to the bottom left where i seem to be having quite a bit of problems so in this area you will notice there is a red bar a blue bar and a little icon there so the red bar is your health should that drop down to zero you will be classified as dead so make sure that you keep that number above zero while reducing your enemies to below zero now this is a pro tip coming from mr g63 the second bar is that there is the uh the blue bar there that is our stamina bar now stamina is required to run to work um even doing things like aiming down your rifle sight requires stamina so stamina is always something that you want to keep an eye on but there's not really much you can do about it as far as um making it not go to zero just by 
pacing yourself. So as you can see, my guy is taking a little bit of a break because I am out of stamina. So I'm just going to wait until that hits 100 again, and I'm going to carry on chopping my wood. The next portion, which would be bottom center, is the hot bar. So you may or may not have noticed that there are three colored lines revolving around your hot bar. Now these three lines are right at the top, that little purple one, is your experience bar. So once you have gained experience, um, well, when you gain experience, you will see that that little bar is slowly but surely increasing. Now, every time that thing gets full, you go up one level. Now, this level allows you to choose um, very interesting perks to increase your, cap your character's capabilities, whether it be building better, harvesting better, um, you know, not don't get hungry so much, uh, heal faster, be able to make food uh, or better quality food, better quality weapons, better quality tools. Um, and it even goes so far as to help with things like bartering with the trader, getting better rewards for doing quests, etc. We will be doing a um, tutorial or a review of the perks. Um, I will be going over how uh, each attribute, so each, um, in Seven Days to Die, there are five attributes. It is uh, perception, strength, fortitude, agility, and intelligence. Now, depending on your personal preferences, um, you can go absolutely mad when it comes to the development of your character. Um, also, uh, sorry, going back to the bottom left of the HUD, um, you'll see that there is a little icon there. Now, this is where your main statuses will appear. Now, these can be things from, for example, now I currently have death penalty, uh, XP penalty protection. Now, this, uh, this, um, stops me from losing XP every time I die, but this only works up until level 6. There are so many other statuses such as uh, infection, there's hunger, thirst, uh, broken arms and legs, scratches, abrasions, bleeding. Um, dysentery is also a very popular status in this game, so watch what you eat. Um, and that is it from me, guys. Uh, I hope you guys really enjoyed this tutorial. I tried to make it as ent entertaining as possible, so if you have any, uh, hints or tips that you would like me to review or uh, debunk, please, by all means, leave a like, a follow, and go ahead and put your, uh, put your comments in the comment section down below. I do read through them, and I am very interested to know what would you like to know more about Seven Days to Die. So, without further ado, all I want to say to you is have an awesome day. I hope you guys find this game and this tutorial interesting and I wish that you have magnificent playthroughs going forward. Bye!